Future technology in the year 2050. The first technology of note for the future is drones. We know that drones have already become a fixture nowadays, but in 2050, they'd be way more advanced and they will become even more visible in the skies. They would take over parts of the inventory of delivery companies. They might also be used for much more than the fun stuff. Today's most advanced drones are military drones used for pilotless missile strikes and surveillance. In the future, such powerful drones will become more private. Rest assured, they won't be used to spy or kill. All we're saying is the drone tech of tomorrow will be much more democratized. And the most obvious use case is e-commerce delivery. Except that drone tech needs to be fine-tuned much more to be effective at working in pedestrian environments. For instance, the drones we have now do not know how to handle fragile cargo, nor are they programmed to be risk-averse. Don't be fooled by the seeming capabilities of toy drones because if those are scaled up for more industrial use without first reprogramming them for safety, they will cause more accidents than usual. Other use cases for industrial drones include delivery delivering vital medical cargo or being used as escorts for sensitive airborne cargo. Sticking with transportation, our next projection for 2050 is supposed to revolutionize transport, and it borrows from Japan's high-speed trains that work with reverse magnetism. And you'd think the world would stop there, but no. Someone has already thought up even faster trains. We're talking about the Hyperloop, and you must have heard of it too. And it is geared to improve transport times for commuter passengers and freight cargo. The idea was first conceived by Virgin Industries. It works by depressurizing a tunnel, or rather a tube purposed built for the speedy train. That is where the name Hyperloop comes from. Much like the Japanese variant, it works with a magnetic force that elevates the train from the tracks as it pushes forwards. The enclosed tube reduces drag considerably, hence the ultra-high speeds. It can run as fast as 600 miles per hour. This means it can traverse America from east to west in five hours. Plus, the tubes might be built underground, which certainly favors the environment. However, this method of transport is still being rigorously tested and should be ready by the time 2050 comes around. Then there's artificial intelligence, or AI for short. So what can we really say about AI? that has not already been said? Is it true that AI has the potential to enslave humans? Maybe the enslavement we're envisioning is not so much a dominant Terminator type enslavement. Perhaps it is more on the line of making us too lazy to do things on our own. Anyway, AI is here to stay, whether we like it or not. We might as well embrace it. And speaking of embracing it, have you heard of ChatGPT? If not, what rock have you been hiding under? The platform is set to revolutionize the AI space. The guys at OpenAI have opted for democratizing AI by putting it in chat mode so anyone can interact with the AI via chat. As such, the chat GBT AI learns as it runs. Otherwise, if that's what's happening now, think about how advanced AI can get by the year 2050. Each individual on Earth may have their own personal AI that can be customized to suit them. You could choose the voice of your AI or even pre-program its quirks as you like it. Suffice it to say, the possibilities of AI are unlimited and might also include the end of humanity as we know it. So caution is advised. We cannot, in all honesty, talk about the future without mentioning space travel. Although NASA has slowed down in its efforts, private businessmen like Elon Musk have taken up the gauntlet. Fortunately, Elon is also a scientist. So his space exploration side and his business savvy come together nicely. The result is SpaceX, and it represents the next frontier in space. Remember the first moon landing in the 1960s? Since then, space exploration has come a long way, but there's still a lot of ground to cover, requiring a humongous amount of funding. Besides that, the technology isn't foolproof. Have you heard of the phrase, space is difficult? In reality, it is, and anything could go wrong, whether on the ground or in outer space. Heck, something like a fire is harder to control out there. All these things have been noted. Humanity's next mission is to construct a base on Mars and perhaps terraform and colonize the red planet. And it starts with a more cost-effective way of getting there and back. 
Hopefully by the time 2050 arrives, Elon and his team will have worked out the kinks in the system. On a more personal human level, we have prosthetic advancements to consider, and we're not talking cyborgs here. For instance, people with paraplegia who use a motorized wheelchair don't have to anymore because they can walk again with an exoskeleton, much like Iron Man without the beam-blasting palm. However, one such prosthetic arm worn by James Young, a test subject, has a built-in flashlight. Prosthetics are essential because accidents happen and victims want to live normally. Not too long ago, prosthetics were usually made of plastic and wood. These were unsightly and uncomfortable for both the wearer and those around him. Prosthetics have advanced so much that they look cool and work better. The next step for prosthetic manufacturers is cybernetic implants to make the products even more usable. Prosthetics for the arm usually require much more tactility and brain function than those for the legs. The user must be able to maneuver objects and the like using brain signals to the arm. Research in this area is still ongoing, but hopefully, in the next 10 to 20 years, the synaptic connection between the user's brain and the arm will be highly improved to give the user a more normalized life. Clothes worn in most sci-fi movies and shows tend to be predictable. They also look like uniforms, but that's just for effect. In the future, clothes could be made with specific abilities. For instance, they could enhance the wearer's strength or be lightweight and bulletproof at the same time. Firefighters' dress could also be made to be fire-resistant to help with entering a burning building. Of course, these types of clothes have to look fashionable, aside from being highly functional. All we're saying is, by 2050, Clothes can be custom-made to suit a specific function. Clothes won't just serve as ornamental objects. They could also help protect the body from harm. And this invariably starts with good design. For instance, you could have a jacket with multiple hidden pockets. There are jackets on Amazon that have laptop compartments on them, and they still look inconspicuous. Beyond that, clothes could have hidden abilities incorporated in them, like wings. Okay, maybe wings are far-fetched, but you get the point. Might we ditch school by 2050? Sounds like good news for many young students. But on a more serious note, school might become more informal as we get into the future. Indeed, there would still be classrooms, but the lessons will be given a much-needed boost. Instead of a teacher having to work with some markers on a board, the lessons would go digital. For example, a history class would involve students immersed in the story via virtual reality headsets. The same goes for other subjects that must be visualized to be correctly learned and trust that this method would have a more lasting impact on the kids. This also goes for tutoring, where teachers don't have to be physically present to administer a lesson. And AI can also be integrated into the learning experience. And with that sort of portal, the possibilities are endless. This is because the AI of the future would essentially know everything. So all known facts of existence are just a click away. In short, it will become harder for students to fail, not even the hopeless ones. This list would be incomplete without our beloved smartphones. And what if we said there would be no such thing as phones by 2050? Would you scream and panic? Rest assured, the guardians of this world are not that cruel. And they have our best interests at heart. Since Steve Jobs came up with the idea of smartphones, and the guys behind the Android platform reverse-engineered the iPhone to make theirs, it has been a breeze. Phone after phone has been released to the extent that old smartphones now represent a substantial environmental hazard. So the argument could be made that they have to go, or at least be replaced by something else. We've seen a few of those ideas in the movies. Some of these include just an earpiece you put in your ears. Others involve air gestures that pull up a hologram, so your hands are essentially your phone. All these ideas are great. By 2050, we might see something like a wristband for a phone. Could cast the hologram of a tiny keyboard on your inner arm, project a small screen just above it. Might even include your personalized AI in the package. So if you think you can't survive without your phone now, better start detoxing as we get closer to 2050.